Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. So I have some good news and I have some bad news regarding NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, the good news is that NVIDIA has finally started selling its RTX 5000 or the trimmed down version of the RTX 6000 workstation GPU to civilians like ourselves. And the CTO of Microsoft has started to say that it's easier to procure the highest of the high-end NVIDIA GPUs for AI and HPC. So let's get into it. So real quickly, uh, Kevin Scott, or the CTO of Microsoft, has finally kind of come up and said that it feels like GPU capacity and demand are starting to reach equilibrium. Um, it's not really sure... We're not really sure why this is resolving now. It might have just been from a dip in demand uh, later in the summer, uh, which now has come back with wild force. But uh, yeah, he pretty much says the massive demand for NVIDIA's graphics cards was driven by major tech corporations, including Microsoft, integrating AI into their offerings. And now that they've actually bought enough of these to have models, uh, to have data centers that can actually handle what they're doing, even if it means that they're uh, building nuclear power plants to power their data centers and are using more water than uh, municipalities would like them to be, um, they're starting to just have enough of these that they don't have to make as large a procurement as they were prior. It used to be that they were all sure that there would be this wild shortage and they wanted to buy as many before uh, the US or China glassed Taiwan in some kind of massive geopolitical conflict, in which we all know that TSMC would be the first target for either side to absolutely obliterate um, to make sure that one side actually had chip supremacy going forward after the conflict. So maybe that's the case. Um, those tensions have also reduced slightly. So it's kind of curious how um, geopolitics is now playing into the global GPU market. And we can really trust Kevin on this because he actually is the singular person at Microsoft who manages all of their GPU allocations. And uh, he's described this role as daunting over the past few quarters. However, he's observed that the availability of compute GPUs is steadily getting better. So it's not you know wildly better out of nowhere, but he said basically Nvidia is probably making more of these and they have a much better understanding of what their supply chains will look like going into the beginning of 2024. And now for what maybe a lot of you are actually watching this video for, which is a bit of information about the brand new RTX 5000 ADA. The naming scheme could not be more confusing because yes, the previous generation was the RTX A5000 and you'd think A would stand for ADA. But anyway, uh, this is their latest uh, AD102 capable GPU with 32 gigs of DDR6. It's not as fast as the RTX 6000, but it's a little bit cheaper. So NVIDIA's board partners have finally started selling these to civilians, uh, basically because they wanted to make sure that they got all of their data center partners out of the way before they started selling basically the surplus on top. This is pretty common when it comes to high-end server-grade hardware like this. Um, generally, you know, the big companies who are making huge orders get priority over plebs like you and me who just go on Newegg and hope to afford to be able to buy, you know, two of these. So basically this, you know, this new GPU has uh, the AD102 GPU. It's severely cut down in configuration to reduce its power consumption just to 250 watts, which is pretty crazy because, I mean, my RTX A5000s I'll regularly use more than that. And unsurprisingly, there are a number of retailers who are wildly gouging prices. So right now you can buy these on uh, PC Connection, eBay, ProVantage, ShopBLT, and ThinkMate, which is Lenovo's site. Um, so obviously with server grade stuff like this, you end up with a bunch of bizarre um, places to buy them initially. And then eventually, you know, in a few months they'll be on Amazon, I'm sure. Although it's workstation oriented, um, none of them currently sell this uh, adding card at its actual MSRP of 4,000. A lot of the prices are 10 to 20% higher. Some are even as high as $7,000, which is like 40% over MSRP, which is kind of nuts. Um, NVIDIA's uh, suggested MSRP for this card is uh, 4,000. And if you wait for the RTX 4000 to be released, um, that's actually only a $1,200 card. So, and curiously, I, at this point, I don't know why you would buy the RTX A6000 because that's only $650 more than the RTX 5000. And, you know, there's no reason to buy old hardware in this case. And uh, this card has 12,800 CUDA cores across 100 SMs. Uh, these SMs are going to be more and more uh, important in terms of the leaks we get from the 5090 and the rumored Titan card and kind of how NVIDIA does their tooling. So it's uh, a little bit less capable than the RTX 6000, which has uh, about 6,000 more uh, CUDA cores, ironically enough, and is just, it's, it's about 30% faster. That, that's basically all you have to know here. Uh, fortunately, the um, bus is still pretty big on the RTX 5000, but the RTX 6000 does have more memory and a wider bus. So really, if you have the money to spend, it's still more worth it to buy the RTX 6000. 
Uh, now, cutting down 30% of the GPU might sound odd, um, but I think this was the only way to build a product that would still sit below the RTX 6000 ADA and give a noticeable improvement over the previous generation. Uh, you kind of have to wonder where they were going here. Um, the 8103 GPU has um, 10,000 CUDA cores over only 80 SMs. So there are curious differences here, and I think the RTX 5000 is kind of a tweener GPU. I'm not sure if I would buy this, especially at $4,000. Like, I, I would much rather have, you know, two and a half RTX 4090s for that. Um, now, what's most interesting about this is that they've really narrowed the power consumption. So, again, at only 250 watts, uh, it has the same cooler as the RTX 6000. And uh, we're going to have to see if data centers start burning down left and right because it's using that famous uh, 12VHPWR um, power connector. And in theory, this has gotten better, but you know, who knows really. No one is really sure uh, where NVIDIA is going to start using the 8103 GPU. The RTX 6000 ADA basically uses a full 8102 using uh, all 142 out of 144 SMs. And uh, the memory is really where that shines. So curiously, the RTX 5000, I think, is more of a like mid-range data center kind of inference play, where efficiency and not using too much power, and maybe achieving a little bit higher density is more of a goal here. And uh, the RTX 4500 ADA will be kind of interesting. I'm, again, I would just buy a 4090, uh, frankly. But, uh, but yeah, so you can buy these now. I think they're kind of overpriced. Um, I would argue NVIDIA is gouging on these even more than the H100 because the H100 is mostly being purchased by um, enterprise clients. I mean, no, no one is, there are very few people who are going out and buying like two H100s for, for home use. For those, I mean, I just rent them and it works fine. If you like our content, please like and subscribe. Uh, let me know in the comments if you're going to be buying an RTX 5000 or if you're just going to keep buying um, RTX 4090s. I think we're getting to a point where it's starting to not make sense to buy 3090s because very soon those will be three generations behind kind of the state of the art. And I think at some point, it, even if it's a good deal, it kind of doesn't make sense to buy old hardware. So if you disagree, uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, as always, we hope you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.